I'm going to shorten down an awful lot of corollaries and theorems and try to make 4.2 and 4.3 with 4.2 and 4.3 make a whole lot more sense if we understand what it means to change a basis. If you understand what it means to change a basis, they're going to go much faster. And the theorems themselves become obvious, oh, that makes absolute sense if I understand that I know how to change a basis. If not, if you build the theorems and completely ignore change of bases, you're going to get to some of the bad things like, like here's, don't write this part down, but here's one of the more uh, scary things. Um, like this is just, you know, these are just some symbols that like on theorem 422, matrix representation theorem on 182. They say E is the collection of V1, V2, up to Vn, but before this point we've used E to talk about standard because it's E's, no, it's just a bunch of V's. And then we have F, which is made up a bunch of W1's and W2's up to WM's, which we normally would have called W and V, but they call them E and F. And these are from vector space V with a transform to vector space W, and so that they're saying that the little v's are a basis set for vector space V, and we call that collection E. Okay, and ve vector space W has its basis vectors W, but we'll call that collection F. And then they go ahead and borrow this notation that they would have, okay, if I would have V, now are those spans? E, what? Are those spans? Up top, the ones you just read. No, they're a basis. It's not just a span. I said they're bases. So what we have is the dimension of this space is n, the dimension of this space is m. So I need to have n vectors that span and are independent. So it's not just a span. It's the basis vectors for it. So the basis vector is, is you have to, have to have the right number of bases, right number of independent vectors for the dimension of the space. That's what a basis is. But the right combination of those vectors will give us every point in the space. Any combination, a unique combination gives you a place in there. Which means, what is that unique combination? What do we normally call it? Coordinates. So if I write this notation, what does that say? There is a vector v whose coordinates made up of v1, v2, v3, but we normally call vector v's standard coordinates what? v1, v2, v3, and then they borrow these really fun things like they say x is equal to v, e, and they're saying that that is the coordinate vector of this object v in this notation basis. They've used too many letters. They're going through here and they're re-interchanging everything and it makes things a little bit difficult. Just so you know, I don't write things differently to make your life harder. I'm going to try to use symbols and things that will make this a bit easier. So the way I'll modify this is the following. If you have a vector space V, a linear transform going to a vector space W. And vector space V is dimension N. Vector space W is dimension m. So I'm going from an nth dimensional space to an mth dimensional space. And if I have non-standard bases, or it could really be anything. So if I would have basis, and on the left-hand side I'm going to use b1, b2, but how many do I need? 
bn, and if I collect it, what would be a good name for this collection? What have we used up to this point? B, pick a letter based upon the basis notations. On the other hand, if I had a basis over here, which was D1, D2, how high do I have to go? DM, and if I would collect this, I'll call it D. Now, if in this space I had an X, and in this space I had a Y, If I write this, what does that mean? It's the coordinates of x in standard basis. What would happen if I wrote this? It's coordinates with the base. Base is B. And if I write this? That would be again the standard coordinates. And what would be this? Coordinates using basis D. Now, there's one thing that when we talk about the word standard, what were the standard coordinates of a vector space? That would be what? Zero. One, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. But how many of them are there? n. It's the identity that's square n by n. What about this space? They're by m. It's the identity that's m by m. <coughs> what would happen if I would take b times x in b? What would that do? It would spit out the x in E. What would happen if I took B inverse times x in E? From standard to B. What would happen if I would take D times y in D? And if I would take D inverse? Is everybody okay with how that all works? So this is the notation I'm going to choose. I'm going to try to stay consistent as possible and not start moving letters around. Okay. Given that this is what we remember and have from change of bases, and this is how this has been written, and I don't want to be messing around with that notation. It's something that we understand. Uh, We know that A times X equal to Y, where this is Rn to Rm, because A is M by N. So it multiplies nth dimensional objects over here, which is an X, spits out a Y, which is an mth dimensional object. We know that anytime you multiply by an m by n matrix, this is a linear transformation. So a matrix multiply is a linear transformation. And you could show that it meets linear combinations. Why? Because matrix multiplication and matrix addition satisfies linear combinations. Right? This is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. The question that's posed 
is if you are given a linear transformation, can I find a matrix so that if you transform x into y, that's true if and only if this matrix times x is also y. Say for example, let's transform A, B, C into A plus B, B plus C. So you can show this is a linear transform. Go home and do that. Convince yourself it's a linear transform. This is a linear transform. Where is it coming from? What am I putting into the transform? What size? R3. R3 spitting out R2. Now this is basically do this at home. Don't just accept what I write. But I would notice that if I would take this special matrix of 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, what's the size of this? 2 by 3. Two by three. And if I multiplied it by A, B, C, what would it spit out? Hey, what? Same thing. So what's one transform? Take your first two coordinates in atom, that's the first coordinate. Take your last two coordinates in atom, second and third in atom, that's your second coordinate. That's my transform, and you could show that it's a linear transform, do that at home. By the way, if I rather were just simply multiplied by this two by three matrix, it does the exact same thing. And so the question is, how in the world can I, you know, here's an example. If you show up and somebody says, here's my transform from 4.1, and you guarantee that it's a linear transform, it's like, okay, instead of doing, let's go all the way back, this whole little set squares and circles and everything else, wouldn't it have been nice to replace this by what dimension? What spaces is it going from? Two to three, so it needs to be a... Three by two. <laughs> Multiplications, the guy on the right is the by two size, right? So it has to be a three by two matrix that does it for you. So you did all the work to show it's a linear transform. Can I actually just have a matrix that does it? Instead of actually thinking about, okay, if a, if a happy face goes here, a happy face goes there, and a happy face goes there, right? You could just have a matrix that does it for you. And that's kind of the point of doing that. All right, what's funny about all that work is this. If I'm going to transform a vector, I need to put the vector into coordinates of some sort. What's the easiest coordinates for us to use? Standard. Standard, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm going to transform this object in standard coordinates. What does that mean? What are the standard coordinates? It's going to be the numbers that you see on this are what? So many E1s, so many E2s, so many E3s. In other words, coordinates are a shorthand way of writing I have so many E1s, and then so many E2s, and then so many, whoops, so many ENs. What the standard coordinates are your linear combo. I threw away the E's, but that's what it really means. Is everybody okay with that? That coordinates are just simply how many of each basis vector. 
But what am I doing to that? Uh, I'm doing a linear transform. Oh wait, so the linear transform of x is a linear transform of, well, standard coordinates are really a linear combination of the elementary vectors. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? Well, what do I know about L? It's a linear transform. What do I know about linear transforms? A transform of a linear combination is the linear combination of the transforms. So that's its definition. So that would mean that this has to equal x1 times, let's go ahead and transform e1. And then x2, let's go ahead and transform e2. And then it's going to be x then, let's go ahead and transform en. Why are you doing e, why not x? How are you not transforming x? I did transform x. x is a vector. And x is always written, is, I have to have coordinates. What does x represent? x is a vector. It's a physical object. I can't draw physical objects. I, draw, I write physical objects according to their coordinates. And so what are the coordinates? Coordinates are just linear combinations of basis vectors. It happens that the values x1, x2, xn, which is your, what we've been calling x. Oh look, x is equal to 1, 2, 3. What do you really mean? This is in standard. What you said was 1, 2, 3. What you really said was you have 1 E1, 2 E2s, and 3 E3s. That's what we've really been doing. When you write in standard coordinates, what you've really said was it's a linear combination of the standard objects, the elementary vectors. So where's x? Well, x is here, but that 1, 2, 3 is my number representation of x. But it's a number representation with respect to what? Who? Coordinates need a who. Standard. So my x is still there. It's just that I chose to write x in standard notation. But any linear combination where you're taking a transform of it, it is going to be the same linear combination of the transforms. But if I look at that, that is a scalar, that's a vector. That's a scalar, that's a vector. That's a scalar, that's a vector. Oh, that's actually the vector, the vector, the vector, times the scalar, the scalar, the scalar. But the scalar, 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 scalars are the who? the coordinates of x in standard. And so what do I have? I have a matrix, L of E1, L of E2, L of En, times the coordinates of x in standard. But this is a M by N matrix. So what have I just found? I have just found that if you want to transform x, it's the same thing as taking this special matrix and multiplying by x in standard coordinates. Where did you get the m to the m by n? Uh, because after you do a transform, what size does it spit out? A transform, what size goes in? N. What size goes out? M. Because that's the other side. Once you moved it, this has moved it to the other side. Well, that's just an M by N matrix, and so that's what we use. We put that together, we call it a theorem, and it simply says, if L is going from Rn to Rm, then simply let A equal transform E1, transform E2, transform E3, transform E4, transform E5, transform E6, transform E7, transform E8, transform E9, transform E10, transform E11, transform E12, transform E13, transform E14, transform E15, transform E16, transform E17, transform E18, transform E19, transform E20,
transform E2, transform EN, and L of X, which is please move an object on the left hand side to the other side. How do I do that? Just take A times X in standard. And if you don't write the E, the assumption is, well, you were using standard. So when the book leaves off a uh, notation, the assumption is, oh, it's standard. I don't have to write that. We all know that. Let's go back to our example. L of ABC was going to A plus B, B plus C. Where am I going from? R, what's going into the object? Three, what comes out? Two. R, two, and that's L. I need to have an A that does exactly this. On the left hand side, that's three dimensional space. What are the standard bases? Zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Right, E1. E2, E3, right, which is that 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? And so what's A? A is going to be, here's how, here's how you make this matrix. Take your bases and just simply move them. Just transform those three alone. That's all we have to do. Where would 1, 0, 0 go? One zero. Where would zero one zero go? One, one. Everybody okay with that? If I want to write a little more work. Again, this is I need to move one zero. I need to move zero one zero. And then I need to move zero zero one. Move the coordinates of the left to the right hand side, and where would I get? I would get one zero one one zero one, which is exactly the matrix that I have. And so what we do is, if A is made up of, L is going from a vector space to a vector space, and the dimension of V is N, and V's standard coordinates are E1, E2, up to EN, then A equal to, you're going to have to figure out where E1 goes, you're going to have to figure out where E2 goes, you're going to have to figure out where EN goes. If you put this entire thing into a matrix, this does exactly what L does. And as a name, We call A the standard representation of L. What's the special word here that really clues us into what we're dealing with? Standard. A standard representation of L requires what coordinate systems does it like? Standard. What does it spit out? Standard, <laughs> right? It's going to take standard coordinates for whatever vector you have, and it's going to spit out the transformed object in standard coordinates. And so what's going to happen here is if you would transform any object, and I don't even know what coordinates they are. You, it could physically look like this. Draw an arrow, you get an arrow. Right? What does A do? 
A requires you to take x in standard coordinates and it will spit out the y, but it will spit it out in standard coordinates. But What if we also have non-standard coordinates? Let's say that the left-hand side is V with L, and it's going over here to W, and we have, this guy has basis B is made up of B1 to BN, and this is basis D, which is made up of D1 to D. M is normally how we talk about it, right? It's M dimensional, and so like, okay, if the dimension of V is N and the dimension of W is M, if we had that. So, if the first thing that you had was L going from V to W has the standard representation A, which takes X's in standard and spits out Y's in standard. So you're able to find the standard representation. That's easy to do. You take the standard elements on the left, you move it to the, stand, move it to the element on the right, and that will be your matrix. So the first thing, that's really easy to find. But the second thing is, um, what would you do if I want, what about L as a matrix? And let's say we'll call it S. So that S would take X's in basis B and spit out Y's in basis D. What about non-standard? Could you think of a matrix that did that? So that one's easy to find. We could always find the standard representation. Just move the standard and then that matrix will be your standard representation. But only can work with standard coordinates. And so here's how we do it. A person gives you the vector in the wrong coordinates. I have a thing that works in standard. So what would you do? I would multiply it by B. And now what's happened? We have X is now in standard. OK, now that you have the right coordinates, let's go ahead and do the transform. How could you transform it? Multiply by A. What does that do? It moves it, but on the other side, what is it actually going to spit out? The Y, but it's in the standard coordinates of the right-hand side. Don't like that. How do I convert it into the correct coordinates on the right-hand side? Multiply it by D inverse. And at the very end, you'll get the right object with the right coordinates. And this entire thing would be is the matrix representation of L from coordinates in B to coordinates in D. So if we understand how to transform coordinates, it's pretty straightforward on how to write that thing as a single object. Now next class what we'll do is we'll go back to linear operators. If I have linear operators, then what, what are you dealing with? You're dealing with the same space. 
And so you, this would be a B and that would be a B inverse. And we'll notice that we'll have a transform in standard and then a transform in B, but they are the same transform. And the other is we'll learn shorthand ways to calculate this as quickly as possible, besides calc finding all the matrices and doing these three multiplications. There's faster ways of doing it. All right, that's it.